So I just arrived in New Zealand. I was almost blown out of the airport, almost didn't land. The weather's just like a force 10 hurricane. But first place I had to go to was Kuma River. Been drinking the Chardonnays for over a decade, wonderful wines. Uh, Michael Brakovich, uh, the winemaker, has always said I should come by and, and see what he's doing. So here I am, Michael. Just, Welcome. Thank you. Just tasted a few wines. And I think that, you know, I know that you love white burgundy. Mm -hmm. And you're not afraid to, when, when people say that uh, your wines are very much like white burgundy. But you also said that they have their own character as well. Maybe you could yeah. describe that. Certainly. We, we're inspired by white burgundy. We, we think they are the best. Chardonnays that, that, that we've tasted. We do taste a lot of them in the course of our work to, to have a look, and we do a lot of comparisons. But there are differences, and I think one of the differences is that we get a brightness and almost a sharpness in our fruit that may have to do with the, the extra ultraviolet light that we have in our environment here. We, we just get slightly different fruit characters, and the textures can be a bit, uh, I guess, softer. Uh, all of our soils here are clay, so it's quite different to the more limestone influenced soils that you would find in Burgundy for example. I think that that's another critical difference. Um, I'd love to work with some limestone with soils as well, we'll just have to find some somewhere. Um, but, but with the clay we, we get this textural element I think that, that's a bit unique to our style. But also it, it seems, but then texture wise it almost feels like there's a chalkiness. That's, I don't know if it's yeah. phenolics but I like the texture. It's yeah, it's that elusive minerality, but it's a different kind of minerality. I don't think it's quite as fine as you would say see in Chablis. You know, Grand Cru Chablis has that, that that real edge to it. Ours it's just a little bit broader. It's mineral, but it's a, a blunter edge, if you if you know what I mean. It's a, a, a bit coarser in texture. And when you were talking about UV. Does that mean you have, is the, is the light more intense or is it you get longer days or do you have more light, you know, light sun days? No, our, our day length here is, is one of the shorter ones in New Zealand because of our latitude. So if you go down to central Otago, for example, they have generally cooler conditions but longer day length. Um, here, I think it's a lot more to do with the ozone hole that's over us, so we do get higher levels of intense UV radiation. We, we have to be very careful about being out in the sun. You know, you can get burned in 20 minutes. Uh, it's quite special here. Um, but in terms of overall light intensity, uh, here in Auckland we, we have quite a, a regular cloud cover. So uh, direct sunlight can be actually quite, quite low at times, but um, we viticulturally have to manipulate the grapes so that they get the maximum sunlight exposure they can and try and expose the berries to the sky, not necessarily to direct sunlight, because the berries themselves can get sunburned as well. And, and when you get the browning on the berries, on the skins, you can get quite bitter tasting compounds coming into the wine. So we are very careful when we leaf pluck to make sure we don't overexpose the grapes. And <coughs> you were saying, I mean, really, at the end of the day, we could talk about winemaking techniques and, I mean, you know all the tricks, all the ways to do things. For you, it's really, you know, out there in the vineyard and this yeah. sort of uh, heat uh, or uh, sun exposure and, and the interplay with, the, with your soils. And the soils, but also the trellis design is very important. The, the way we manipulate the canopy, position it, trim it so that it's... Uh, well exposed, but not overexposed. Because the trellis is it's a uh, li right? It, it's all li li or lyre or lyre. Okay. Uh, it's, just, it's, it's a U-shaped divided canopy that that just maximises the exposure that we can get. I mean, you get the same type of effect with narrow rows, but uh, our lyre goes back to the 80s, and and we we've, we've adapted all our mach machinery to cope with that now, and it it, it works for us. But I must say that that's only in our own vineyards. All of our growers are on narrow, single rows. Well, let's taste a few of your uh, older Chardonnays. We tasted the, the newer vintage 2009, but I'll be interested to see yeah. how those are. We can talk about it okay. afterwards. Great. Cool. Thank you. So, Michael, we, we just tasted some really uh, fascinating older wines. And I think uh, there's a perception that 
that New Zealand wines are wines that you should drink young, and they show so much exciting fruit. Yeah. But this is, you know, this proves that you know there's real terroir, real character. These wines structure. Is that important for you? It is, and it is very much vineyard dependent. So our simpler wines come from vineyards that maybe crop a bit more and and give you that initial satisfaction, but maybe don't last quite as long in the bottle. But certainly our better vineyards, and Maddie's is one of those, that where um, the characters change and evolve, and, and you see the benefit of that over maybe a six to ten year period. Uh, I think that's true of the better vineyards all around the world, that, that they have the ability to age. And, and it is a truism about New Zealand wine that maybe most of them don't age particularly well because they do have those bright fruit characters and they're probably better younger. But when you have a better vineyard, you can build on the initial characters that you have and the, the bottle age development, especially now that we are using a screw cap closure, you get this consistent reductive uh, formation of bottle maturation characters or bottle bouquet. Yeah, I can see that in this 2004, it's really taking on tertiary characters of lanolin, lemon curd. Um, I really think it's fascinating. It's a wine that you drink and you keep on trying to figure it out. I think that's what's, you know, it's a complex wine. It's, yep. it's really, it's fun, but it's serious. It's, it's, it's a really interesting, really excellent wine. So. Thank you.